as a young and do it all for the G. I'm holding conversations, tapping the mental. We tryna build like a king. Sit down with G Connect, gotta think. I'm spitting the game with bass. I gotta shout out today. As a young and do it all for the G. I'm holding conversations, tapping the mental. We tryna build like a king. Sit down with G Connect, gotta think. Uh, I'm spitting game with the bass. I gotta shout out today. Uh, Clack, clack, what's happening, y'all? This your boy, Midget Slick. I'm here with the homeboy, D, and the homie, G2Bs. Yeah, that, we keeping it all the way gangster on the G-Connect show. Act like you know, homie. If you ain't fuck with them, I ain't fucking with you. Yeah, that. Straight out of Southeast Dago. Logan Ann. Clack, clack. What's happening, though, man? It's Mr. Ben Ben Bracken, Fig Newton, representing this fast lane shit. I'm letting y'all know to go tap in with the homie G2Bs, Bill Blast over there with that G-Connect show. Generation Conversation. Good game, good feed. Go on over there and get your belly fed. Yeah, most of all, like, comment, and subscribe. Let the homie know I sent you. Whoa, whoa. Uh, so, before, you, before you go in there, let me, let me, let me start my little spill of questions. For, for a let, me, let me switch the vibe a little bit. All uh, right, we all know what we don't know. What schools you went to, Gabby? I went to Jordan Lock High School, Markham Gompers. Okay. What? How, how did how did you get involved with uh, Death Row, BJ? Uh, <clears throat> my Death Row introduction came about, you know, like I say, um, a phone call and a meeting. I, I had to sit down with the big homie Terry Carter and uh, a few other individuals, and um, you know, we was having a discussion about this new individual that arrived, which was Simon, A.K. Merrill Shield Knight, and. Um, the building and the structure of Death Row, and that he had the uh, the homies behind him, which was the Power Rules, Luda's Park Power Rules, originally Luda Park Power Rules, because they all was from Luda's Park primary, basically a lot of them. They were originally LPPs, slash model. And um, that was my former introduction of it, you know what I mean? Basically getting involved. Did the mob come on after the Death Row? Or was it because, uh, like I said, I, I, I'm not a power rule, so I can't really speak on their legacy. But I know when I was growing up, all I knew was Lewis Park Power Rule. Exactly. Death Row came out and it was Lewis Park Mob. But then I don't, you know, I, I never really sat down with nobody from Lewis Park personally and asked them that question. Maybe I should. Well, no, what, what it is, that's why I'm explaining it to you now. It's, it's always, like I said, it's always been LPP, period, first. Then you had your M, you know, you got your Lime Street, your front FTP, full time prior rules, you know what I mean? Cedar Block. Then you had Ma, you know what I mean? There has always been Ma, it was Ma, but originally that umbrella falls on the LPP. It wasn't the Ma wasn't big as it was. Death Row made Ma big as it is. It was Lutus Park Power Rule. Every time you heard it, if a nigga say conscious here, he's gonna say LPP, I'm from Lutus Park. You nigga stay in the mob, he gonna still tell you I'm from Lutus, I'm from LPP. You go to the county jail and we was in the blood module, niggas claim Lewis Park. All the mobs, all the L streets, when they fell in the module, they fell under the LPP umbrella. Even though they was all from them set certain sections, they still fell under the LPP umbrella, except FTP. But FTP still, some of them still fell under that umbrella, which is full time for our rules. Right, Feel right. Right? But no, originally uh, the mob was um, developed based on the security aspect of things. You know what I'm saying? Mob James. Who originally connected that um that whole squad up, and then once Buncher got out the pen, his brother he turned Buncher on, and Buncher became Simon's personally bodyguard. So Buncher was his right arm man, like he became his his personal to go to guy. First it was like Haron, you know what I mean. Then it was discrepancies, you know, in between them the homies on who's gonna sit in the saddle with this nigga. You know, and, uh, another story, but anyway, and that's that was the establishment of it. So that's where the mob came in at. So they took on the mob name, and not only that, because Suge originally lived in the mob. His parents grew up, he grew up, literally lived in the mob. That's where he went to school at. Went on and graduated to go on a college and play football to become a bouncer. His parents, right now today, they still, they, they residence was in the mob. So that's where the mob came from, because of, that was Simon's original uh, background and where he came from. Right, okay. All right. Right now, man, I'd just like to say right quick, intervene, because I'm with my live right here, IG, man. Look, if you ain't tapped in, you ain't tuned in, man. Tap in, man, to G Connect right now, man. IG, we tap, we we tune in and tapped in to G Connect, man. You feel me? I got my boy brother Bill, man, and 
D I'm talking to right now, man, on the camera. Subscribe, hit that like, share button, man. You already know, man, rules of engagement in the building, man. We here, man. And today's topic, we just chopping up dialogue, man. So we subject to uh, mosey down the lane, man, and hit a couple of different uh, different segments, you know what I mean? Because we just giving you real, raw, uncut dialogue as three kings, man. Right. But, yeah, but hey, Bill, can I just, can I, I, I know you, 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 you intervened and came back with your question, but I, I, I don't want to get off surface of D's question about the nail polish. Oh, okay. I mean, if you, if you got something up, speak on that, speak on it, brother. <laughs> No, no. It, it, needs, no. it needs to be said though, like you said though, ain't, ain't nobody really saying nothing. Ain't nobody, everybody going on like everything is cool. Like, you right, know, like, when somebody like, say something, they get like, now you hating, like you, you hating. Like you hating. Yeah, no, Anytime no, you no. say something, if you ain't in agreement with the bullshit, you hate. So or that, you just. See, that's the part that has to be ignored. And people like us just got to say what the fuck needs to be said and keep it moving and continue to say what we need to say. You know what no, I'm you saying? It's like this, bro. Um, there's nothing wrong with any man making his money and taking his taking his entrepreneur skills to certain levels of being different. But it's like, come on, man. As a man, you still have to pick and choose your commodity and your product on what you want to put out there and what you represent as a man. Okay, so it's like, how the fuck am I going to put a nail polish line out here when I'm a male. I'm not finna wear no fucking nail polish unless I'm wearing this shit, then why would I put it out there and push a line unless I'm really participating in wearing it? So that's where yeah. the catch is. Oh, that's my point. So that's where the catch is. Because that separation itself, I'm not all, I, I'm not gonna consider myself, even though I do consider myself as a man, but well, come on, let's be real, man. Society shows it, man. The world we live in today shows it, bro. You half and half. You cut, nigga. Straight up. You half and half. There's because ain't no real man, ain't no man in his right state of mind, consciously, that's aware of himself as a man. Ain't no man, heterosexual, nothing feminine about him, go put no fucking nail polish on his hands and promote it to other men and say, it's fly, it's cool. It's the new shit. And I'm starting me a line. <laughs> no, <Nah>, bro. <laughs> facts. Hey, facts. Real shit. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, y'all need to stop trying to confuse society and confuse us real ones and confuse the heterosexual ones like we crazy, like we losing our fucking mind. We ain't losing our mind, man. It's just the world we live in now. It's just the generational gap that we're in now. That this shit is like a okay that whatever... It's thrown out there. If the majority best say this is what it is, then damn it, fuck you heterosexual niggas. This is what it is. And so we got to sit back and say, shit, hey, what can we do, man? We outnumbered. Really? So my whole thing, like I say, all right, we can, yeah, we we can be acceptance to it, but we ain't got to participate. So you ain't finna see Big Cat with no goddamn nail polish on no time soon, nigga. In life. <laughs> You know, I know it's out here now. So hey, that means hey, 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 hey. he gonna set rules of engagement. You know what I'm saying? A nice little package. Don't, don't start the dozen shit. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just saying. You know hey, we hey. know. But you want to you start the dozen? Don't start that bullshit, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this the first podcast I came on, nigga. I had to, they had to put me on hold because the host had to go shave. And, Oh, well, hey, you the first line that I had, uh, first motherfucking conversation I had that I had to help. Nigga, needle the thread and everything, sew the whole shit together, nigga, shit. Why you bullshitting? You got your own shit. Nigga, I got some tips from you. But I didn't get that one, nigga. How about that, nigga? <laughs> yeah, how about that one? All right, all right. Hey, hey so, so your transition from death row, I'm sure they had a nice little... You know, a little grace period. So how did you transition into uh to the Trio family? How did that? How did you fall in the in the, in, the, in the scene of that? And, and what role did you play in that? Like, what was your what was your handle there? What was your position there? Okay, uh, <clears throat> coming falling up out of the death row. Like I say, we went in. I got my production deal. I was with the row for about four and a half, almost five years. 
from the early 90s, from 92 on up. Um, and from there, basically, I just like put myself in a sponge situation with Simon, where I sit back and I just watched him, observed him, and I learned a lot from him, business-wise. Because nigga had a show, no matter what motherfuckers say, man, feel me? And it's like, it takes a certain caliber dude to deal with that type of dude. And that's all that was. That's why niggas didn't understand our relations or how it was that, you know, I stepped in the game and, and, and me and the homie ended up doing what we did and, and this nigga gets squeezed the way he squeezed and but then we end up being partners, you know, in business and really becoming close for 19, 20 years, man. How's that? And that's because, first of all, I was able to understand the nigga because I read it. I did what other niggas didn't do. I took the time to watch this nigga read it, examine it, totally, just like you would do any nigga in the streets. I took that street mentality and I studied that shit. When other niggas got bought off, they they they, they was caught up to the fucking mesmerized with the starstruck shit. They was mesmerized with the material shit. But see, I came in the game already, all full fledged from the streets with that shit already. I had low riders, I had cars, I had jewelry, big big diamonds, big clustered ass jewelry. My jewelry was from out of 10th Street, out of Kansas City when I was in the 80s, when I was a deep boy. So I, I came from that background already where I was prepared for this shit when I came in the industry. So it wasn't fascinating with me. So a lot of the homies was fresh out the field doing four years, five years, three years, eight years. Niggas ain't never had no money. They missed the crack era. You know what I'm saying? They was locked down during the crack era. So they don't know what it feel like to make two, three hundred thousand in a couple of months, man, off some fucking crack. So they missed that era. So for, for a person to put them in position and, and they pan them and all we got to do is whoop ass, it's a done deal. So I learned from him. I watched him. I sit in on different business meetings, you know what I mean, different things. And, and, and we talk many and many and many days, many and nights. You know, we didn't sit down over dinner and just we just chopped it up. You know what I'm saying? Had plenty of talk. So I learned from it. So in that aspect, once I grew and I felt myself growing, it was my time. So I merged from death row and I established my own label in 97. And I established my own label called Paper Chase Entertainment, PCE. And from Paper Chase Entertainment, I ended up signing about, I had about a total at that time, I want to say I had about a total of four groups signed to my label and probably about anywhere between 10 to 12 solo acts. So I had a total of about, on my roster, I had about 27 acts. Not to mention I had 28, 28 to 29 dancers. And they was all out of San Bernardino County and the Riverside County. So I had a big squad. And so back then, I was the first independent company in Watts to really create create that buzz and, and make some noise. I mean, so for about five years, PCE was all over all over the place. So I took up the space from where my little homie JCL, Juvenile Committee started. They opened the door. Then OFTB and them took the door and opened it up some more. Then I came behind them, behind OFTB and them, established my independent company, PCE, Paper Chase Entertainment. Plus, me, Rat, and Top Dog had established a, a production company during that time of the era when we were signing Death Row, which was called RBDD, Rat, BJ, and Dude. So from there, I just took that formula, took that teaching and everything, and I instilled it into my independent company. And so for five to six years, I ran my independent company, put out a, an independent album called Watch Theory Assassins. Uh, the album did all right. Um, once we put out that album, I um, went to went in the studio to start recording and working on two other artists' solo albums. Uh, went through the transition of Baby Mama Problems where I ended up dropping the artists, put the album on the shelf. So uh, for about three years, musically, I went into a transition and I just concentrated solely on my film and everything because I was raising my kids at that time by myself, my twins, little boy and little girl. They was they was young at that time, so uh, I, my my concentration was solely, you know, been a full fledged father as well, and still trying to juggle my careers and go to school and obtain my degrees and shit. So it was like I was juggling it all, but I did it with no complaints. That's why I hated when niggas came around me. They was complaining. I said, shut the fuck up, nigga. I don't want to hear that shit, nigga. You see the two kids over there? Nigga, I just brought my kids to the studio with me. Shut I don't want to hear none of that shit, man. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to hear no complaints from me. because I did it all, bro. So <clears throat> from that transition, um, I got a, I, I, I got a, um, I wouldn't say opportunity, but I had, I had a, a, 
a situation thrown in my lap. And this is how Trill came about. So in 07, which was two Trill was was uh, established and born, was 07, 2007. And my first time artist to two Trill was uh, Young Money Mo out of, off of 84th Street, man, 84th Swans, which was my first time artist, me and Bun B. But uh, establishing myself to Trill for Paper Chase Entertainment, which is still a, a prominent company. It's still under the umbrella right now. It's one of my companies that I run as far as out of management, artist management, and, doing, and under productions. So PCE is still in existence. It still has a FIN number behind it. It still is in existence. It's still a part of my corporations as well. So um, trending from there, uh, I, was, I was on my way to an audition. I got a phone call. I know a lot. <laughs> And I know cats that be listening to me, and I'm like, well, damn, man, this nigga cap get a lot of phone calls. <laughs> well, shit, that's what happened when you're a real one, nigga. Yeah, your phone rang, nigga, shit. So, you know, niggas call you. you know? But uh, I was on the road, and this is true facts, true story. You know, again, like I say, when I, when I share these livelihoods to TV land, and you know, I share because it's facts. Um, I'm, I'm on my way to an audition, and um, I get this call, and I get this call, Soon as I picked the phone, I'm like, yeah, uh, Cappuccino Films. Son, yo, son, God, where, where you at, Cap, Big Cap, where you at? I just hear this nigga hollering and screaming because this is how he is in real life. He's, he's just like me. He's animated. He's full of energy. And he's a great dude. I love him, man. It's my boy, and I love the hell out of him. And I will, I, I'll break a nigga neck behind him, man, because he's a real one. But he's hollering and screaming. Yo, Cap, where you at, son? Son, done. I need you, son, we need you, son. They they about to rob Bun, man. They, 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 it's going down, man. They finna rob. I'm going. I said, X, who finna rob who, man? What, what are you talking about, blood? Who, what are you talking about? He said, God, man, can you just come, man? I said, X. And when I say X, I'm talking about Chino XL, my nigga. The legendary, the lyricist, the motherfucker that Pac disrespected and this. But boy, listen. If they had to go neck to neck, Pac couldn't fuck with him. I'm sorry to tell y'all, Pac would not be able to fuck with this boy in no lyrical ring, man. Chino X. We all entitled to our own opinions. We all entitled to our own opinions. That's right. That's right. And, and if we want to go there after that, we can go. We can go back to this and battle that. Because I'm a stick. I'm a stick with my guard. Uh, hey, I'm a Pac. I'm a Pac fan. And I put my bag up behind him. I'm telling you. Hey, hey, man, that's, that's another conversation. Continue, please. Continue. All right, get your ass over there. there with the <laughs> I hit you with the box. Can't be kissing my nigga Pac, though, nigga. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, that's my nigga right there, man. I pull away, nigga. I didn't touch the feelings because, oh, yeah. Yeah, don't yeah, talk about Pac, nigga. They talk about Pac or Nip, nigga. I'm cool. <laughs> you talking about all the mother niggas. You can't talk about Pac or Nip, my nigga. Look, so, so, excellent. He telling me, yeah, man, um, they about to rob the set. And I'm like, who robbing what? He said, man, I'm on, um, hold on. Son, where, where we at, son? And he talking to somebody in the background, so they tell him, we between 11th and 9th Ave off of um, Western at the church, and it's a park. They in V&G hood, bro. So now listen, they between V&G and you know, you got the Crips over here on the border, and you got Crips on the other side, because me and Jesus is like in between them. Right. Always is a little further down, then you're going into the brim territory, you got some more brim. But primarily, it's the VGs. So when I but when I pull up, the homie nut is there. But anywho, when I get the call, bro, basically the VGs, and um, I want to say, uh, I know it was a couple of five deuces there for a fact. Know that for a fact. But then um, it was a few 60s. And then like just spread it out other Crips from different sections of LA. But primarily it was Buzz and Crips at the park for the smash the video shoot. This is Mike Jones video shoot. This is Mike Jones featuring Snoop Bun B, my six folk. I'm in the video, I got a feature, I got a cameo in the video that day. That's how I got in the video that day so um when, when x tell me give me the information tell me what they had okay boom i shoot to my audition real quick because i was already like 15 20 minutes already in transition already on my way there go to my audition 
leave my audition, fly over there, get to the shop. When I pull up, by the time I'm pulling up, they can't, could, could, they, now the director is Dr. T. This is how I build a relationship. This is how I met Dr. T. This is how me and T ended up building a relationship. Shout out to my boy T, man, another great brother, great king. Um, when I pulled up, you got the homies, on, you got the, the Damus on this side, Crips on Keyways on this side, and they coming, and they coming at the church. The old security dudes and them trying to pull the gate shut. They won't let them do any more shots at this point. They, they can't leave out the gate to, to drive around in the perimeters of the neighborhood to do any more shots. The niggas is coming at them right now because they didn't tap in. Apparently, the production team didn't tap in with nobody from them neighborhoods and get no clearances, dog, to shoot no shots down there. You know how the rules go. They ain't right. tapping. Shit is real. Right. So I pulled right up. Whoa. When I pulled up, I pulled up through the crowd. I pulled right up to the gate. Whoa. I jump out my truck, sound beating this shit, I jump on my truck, boom. As I jump on my truck, I look to my left, I see the little homie Bird. Bird's leading the squad. As soon as I see Bird, I go, well, I walk straight over to Bird. Bird, cat, what's up, little homie? Shake hands, hug. Shake a few of the BNG little homies' hands. Say, what's up, Dom? What's up, homie? What's up, Woo? I'm, I'm from Woo Woo, I'm from the Knicks. And I introduced myself to him, spent the round, walk over here, I introduced myself to the Keyways. I say, hold on, I mean, I'm going to holler at you in a minute. I say, I'm, I'm working on this production right here. I walk in the gate. So when I walk in the gate, walk immediately to the trailer, Chino XL in the trailer, he and take me straight to Bun B, introduced me to Bun, the wifey. Pimp was in jail at the time. The bodyguard truck, big truck buck, and the homie Bun, which was a uh, road manager. So when he do the introduction, you know, I looked at Bun, and of course, UGK, you know, was, was uh, one of the rap groups back then at the time of coming up when I was in the streets, you know what I mean? It was a group that I listened to. So to have the honor to, you know, really meet the Trill OG, not to mention I'm about to connect with this nigga the next 16, 15, 16 years of my life, me and this dude to have a relationship and a connection. I didn't have that idea to even feather that thought. I wouldn't even, you know what I mean, tripping on that. But this is what happened. So, uh... <clears throat> Like I say, once we did the introduction, shook hands, hugged him. I looked right at his wife. She looked me in my eyes. I looked at her, looked at B. I told her, I said, blood, don't worry about nothing, homie. I said, as long as you in LA, from this point on, I said, my nigga, I got your back. Don't worry about shit. Ain't no nigga finna take nothing from you. Ain't no nigga finna rob you niggas, nothing. I got it. Let me go out and holler at them right quick. So boom, I left the trailer. I walked straight up to the director, shook his hand. He was introduced to T. I said, who the petty cash holder? They looked at me, because I talked they lingo. They looked at me. So how does nigga know petty cash holder? I said, yeah, who the petty cash holder? And who's the producer? T said, get him, get, get, get him whatever you need. Get, get him whatever you need. Get him what he want. Hey, get him. Get guys over here. He started pointing out, telling me, get him over here. I said, look, I said, this is what I need, man. I need a certain amount of money, da, da, da. You know, I ain't gonna put the numbers out there, but it was some numbers. Put the money out there. I need this money, man. And we need to hire at least Four or five of them guys, and four or five of them guys need to be hired. You didn't have no business coming over here into this area shooting a film or a video, bro, and y'all didn't check in with nobody. I said, man, y'all y'all sanctioned in the middle of Crips and Blood area. This is a fucking gang banging confessed area right here. And these dudes are banging. It's wars going on right here, right now. These niggas ain't over here happy shooting videos, bro. What, what, what they want? What they want? I said, so they give me the money. I get the money, like I said, I call a little bird, get the young homie, and I get it, uh, 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 Don, brother, uh, uh, God damn it, what's my little nigga name, five dudes, look like a Samoan, but anyway, I get it him, holler at them, break them down, they get three or four of their little homies, whatever they want to give them, but I give it to the main sources who I know they listening to. Right. And from that point on, they finish shooting their shots, in that area, we packed up and left there. We went downtown LA. Them same young niggas that I hired to watch them, followed them straight downtown, secured them the whole day. They had a great video shoot. They were secured. Everything was A1. That's the beginning of me and Bun B relationship, 07. That's how we tied in. I mean, excuse me, 06. That's how we tied in. That's how we became Trill. Bun had already established two Trill, him and Pimp. They had <laughs> You know, a situation with Trill, it was Trill 
with, with Boosie and Webby. But Bun established two trips. It's like a lot of people be having a confused and mixed up. See, we two trio. Pimp started trio with, B, with, with, with Webby and Boosie. So that was our trio chapter. But we two trio. That's what the Roman number two trio. So that's where the two trio came in about. So two trio was established in Bourne in 07. For us, two trio West. I took the trip, uh, two trio West chapter. As far as my position, when I came in, when I came in the game, I, I started in the game, established myself. I was securing the situations for us, Bun B and UGK for about two years with Big Truck, putting Usalama, make sure my nigga shit was straight everywhere we moved, especially when it came to the West Coast. Any shows, anything dealing with the West, the Midwest, it came through me. Feel me? So from there, about after three or four years and building myself and establishing myself with him. Now it was time for me to move up the ladder to another level because I knew that's where I was going anyway. It was time for my CEO aspect to take an effect and me to push up a notch or two to a whole different level. So I became business partners with him. So for 12 and a half, 13 years, we became prominent business partners. And we, real, we, we built and ran our label together. So we built Two Trill ENT and Two Trill West. We built that label together. And I signed artists from the South, the Midwest, from Kansas City, and all the way to California, to Los Angeles, to Sacramento. Uh, we still have a lot. We still have a few artists assigned to us right now today. Unfortunately, because of the way the game is, I end up having to put a few niggas on the shelves. Niggas got beside themselves. Disloyal, dishonorable. You know how to see that how the game go. So that's that's where we at with it right now today. But I'm in the process right now. We get ready to release new music. I'm I'm getting ready to drop this new album called Back to Business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you start Bun B featuring a, a host of others like Wale. I got Wale on the album. I, I, got, I got my major uh, single right now. I got a major single right now, great drop right now with Bun B featuring um, Buster Rhymes, E-40, and my son, Lil Nino. Um, like I said, I got a host of cats on there, man, from uh, French Montana to uh, shit, Lil Webby. You know what I mean? I don't want to spill the bean, but just to name a few. But yes, it's it's a, it's an album I've been sitting on for a couple of years. So what I did is went in and redigitized it, um, putting another another master mix on it, and um, I'm gonna release this bitch, man. You feel me? But that's how Trill was established. That was the birth of Trill, and that's where we at today. True Trill West, man, in the building, man. CEO Nino Cappuccino. You no, feel me? No. Okay. So now now when did when did you start transitioning to the uh? The, the the podcast world, because I mean you've been you you've been you've been on a few different uh situations where you like came hey, in my opinion from the outside looking in like fuck you niggas I can do this shit my goddamn self blood I don't need none of you motherfuckers <laughs> you know what I'm saying it was it looked like okay I I do that okay that's something all right cool this shit ain't working out and something else you know what man you motherfuckers. Is, you know, fuck you motherfuckers, but I, you know what I'm saying? So how did, how did that go? Cause I, I'm just starting mine, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I didn't join nobody else shit. I didn't, I just started from ground roots and, you know, I'm taking it one episode at a time. You know, it's just I'm a question you. myself, so motherfucker can't be mad at nobody but me. I don't give a fuck about that nigga. If I put something out wrong and you didn't tell me about it, nigga, that's on you, nigga, cause I'll run it by you first. So is this a question you asking me? Yes, sir. How did I start up? Because you it sound like you asking me why did I start my own? Like I came from somewhere else. No, I'm no, asking you, how did you get into it first before you started? I I, I did my research, motherfucker. Don't, don't get don't get you know what I'm saying, like I'm blind, nigga. I did my research, nigga. You was on other shit before you got before you started your own shit. You know? Yeah. So that yeah. means nigga, you was part of a band before you went solo, nigga. So I'm asking you, how did you start your music career, nigga? That's what I'm asking you. You know what I'm saying? Let me break it down in, in, in would, nigga, term, nigga terminology, nigga. <laughs> yeah, five, you blunt, nigga, something, nigga, do something, nigga. Get your mind right. You know, they smoke on G Connect, man, so I got to hit what TV, man. But now look, check this out. When I came in, I had already came in from the beginning knowing I was going to launch and build my own platform. That was my whole strategy. But how do you build a platform if you're not already established? So you have to get established. So that's what I did. I started establishing myself. Uh-oh, we lost you, Paul. 
We lost sound. I gotta close this there out. Don't fuck up our lives. There we go. So I took on uh, other invites and uh, I started doing shows. The launching of my show came about with the Chronicles. I did Gangster Chronicles, right? Call, I called Jay, told Jay, but what's happening, homie? I said, I see you over there doing your thing. Nigga, I need to get on. Got you. What, what you need? What, I got you. Just come on. So they put me on. I went over there, did my thing with Jay. Did a couple of shows with Jay. Did uh, And uh, Alex Alonzo, shout out to Alex. Man, cause Alex is a guru, man. That nigga's a beast with it, man. And again, basically going in, what I did, like I do with anything else, be smart about it. I, I watch, observe who I'm supposed to watch. And I say, okay, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, this is what's going on. So I sit and I watch Alex. I watch Alonzo. Okay, this is how you do your research. And this is how this is, okay, boom. And so from there, I started establishing. I went back to the drawing board. I started piecing and putting my shit together. You feel me? Okay, now, of course, knowing marketing and promotions, we both know that when you putting out product or you putting out something to sell, it has to be catchy. So the first thing I did, I said, okay, my name got to be catchy. My title, my podcast, it has to be something that's going to stand out. It's got to be different. It's got to be something different from others. What can I do to compete with Chronicles? That's the first thing I did. I put myself on a platform, on a pedestal because Two years ago, almost three years ago, they was like the biggest shit primarily when it came to the street levels of this podcast. They was the biggest shit, hands down, with Street uh, with Street right. TV and Kevin Mack and the rest of them. That was basically that, that pedal stool. So I said, well, what can I do? And also um, my other guy, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Townsend? Uh, Skip, Skip, his show. So taking all that into consideration and, 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 and doing my homework, I said, I have to come up with something that's going to be catchy, man. You know, something that, that'll that be attractive. Feel me? And um, it just came straight to me, like, instantly. Rules of engagement, man. Fucking rules of engagement. It's got to be rules of engagement, man, because there's rules behind this shit. Feel me? There's rules. And that was it. And that's where I got the ROE at. So the ROE was established. And once I established the ROE, then I start putting technical and all the, um, you know, the technical things together, the behind the scenes stuff together. And voila, ROE was born, man. And thanks to my, my subscribers out there, man. Thanks to my, my supporters, man. I really appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all for supporting me, man. Uh, I, I can't say, man, I'm grateful. I'm thankful, man, because... You know, uh, my subscribers is coming in, man. They pouring in, man, because, uh, you know, that that means to me, they believe in my stuff. They believe in my content, man. So I'm going to keep delivering and giving y'all this great content. No matter, despite the little bullshit negative comments that comes across my board every now and then, I already know that's that hater cologne. That's them haters. That's them hoes, man. That's how they act, man. You feel me? It's cool. I'm not tripping. But I'm going to still keep delivering this raw, uncut content for the people, to the people, by the people, man. Because I am your guy, man. I'm your host, Nino Cappuccino, man. If you haven't subscribed, man, you ain't tapped in, you ain't tuned in, man. Please pick that phone up right now, man. Call Gladys. Tell Gladys to tell Gloria, man, to tell Brenda. And Brenda, call your fucking homegirl, man, to tell Andy to tell every damn body, man. We here, man. G Connect, man. Do you feel in. me? You feel me? With DJ Two B, a generation conversation. You ain't got the patience.